Yehova Mulak Ola Mola Mat Yehova Mulak Yame Rakis Yehova Gadola Makari and Tios Yehova Yadonai Yehova Elohim Kurios Tios Penta Greta Kurios Tios Pestos Elda et Yehova Yel Emuna Yehova Ibas Leon Kurios, Otios, Openta Greta. Baslios, Baslion, Kai Kurios, Kurion. Ehova the Bar Halal, Elohim the Bar Halal. Ehova Elohim, Gadol Gadol Geber. El Elohim Israel, Isus Christos. Ton Christon Isun Ton Kurion. Kurion in Mahagion Penta Greta. Gadol Gadol Gebura Yehova Ishmal Kam Yehova Shamma Yelnakum Yehova Yelnakum Yapa Natsak Israel La Shaker Gava Gava Triembos Yehova Isus Christos Pantakreta Gadol Gadol Gebura Mora Rosh Nasa Elohim Elohim Ille lae shalot, Yehova malak, Yehova malak, Olam Olam ad, Yehova elaheno, Yehova ekad, Gadol Gadol, Gebura. Zaan logan ogar tautios, Dulas desmios despotes, Dikae sune en Isus Christos, Kurion, 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 Hagion, Hagion, Hagio, Numa Pantacreta, Gadol Gadol, Gebura. Ehova Ihe Elohim, Ehova Ihe Elohim. Ille Lae Shalut, Isus Christos. Ton Christon Isun Ton Kurion. Kurion Ima Hagion Pantacreta, Gadol Gadol, Gebura. Derek Emuna Bakar, Mishfat, Shava. The Megalogai of Yahweh Elelion Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, a training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling, this very great, unique, infallible, an inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkenu to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory, realizing we have been kept over here alive on this earth to be a witness for the Lord's word. As Isaiah chapter 55 in verse number 4, when Lord God the Father would give a comparison with David, and he calls to those people that he has been kept for you as a witness, as a leader, and as a commander. The same thing applies for every believer in every, church, every generation of the church age, that he has given for a world each and every believer who has been made in the image of God are called to be little lower than Elohim. When they confirm to the image of my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, they would be a witness to the people. They would be a leader 
and they would be a commander to the people. Having such a great life in us, we are not here to spend our time like the way how vanity of the mind of unbelievers they perish, but rather we have been called to look upon the standards of the content of the word of Lord God, wherewith Lord God the Father shows to a man that which he cannot look, the things pertaining to a back of a man which he cannot look, the same thing what Lord God the Father shows to a man, the sin of his life which he is not able to qualify to be in the presence of Lord God the Father, because he is not able to search Lord God the Father with all of the, with all of the strength, with all of the soul, with all of the mind. So, dear brethren, use the privacy of your priesthood to confess your sins through rebound. And let's come back and continue what Lord God the Father has prepared and kept for us on today's date in every really past, to the praise of His glory in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. We shall continue after this prayer. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of His word. Infinitely Divine Holy Father, once again coming into the grace of the Lord to learn thy truth. Sovereign Lord, so many things which are preserved and kept for us in this marvelous word of yours. To realize and understand the click which you have said, that you are a consuming fire in the past, the same thing you have said in the New Testament, you are a God of love. Thinking to think that we are just a God of love and not a consuming fire is absolute misery which we are able to face. Every breath of our life, O oh Lord, we need to examine ourselves. With fear and trembling, we need to work out our life which are given for us. Because by looking upon the standards of your holiness, we have been called over here to realize that the good work which you have begun in us, it is you, it is you who are going to make it to be perfect of on completion in that. So Father, as we are going to show you the things which are prepared and kept for us on today's day to the past, we pray the mentoring minister of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten, to challenge, and to bless us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen. With Christ Jesus, our Lord of our God, every believer is able to have what we call peace. If every believer is not able to realize why is this peace which has been established with Christ our Lord of our God is so much essential, then he hasn't really understood what is the purpose of this life? So he says in Romans chapter 5 in verse number 1, emphasizing, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And this peace, what Lord God the Father speaks about, is what every believer has to be realizing and understanding. It is nothing but your body being called to be as the standards of Lord's temple being indwelt in you. That's the word peace. And people really don't understand about these things. Because the peace with God which have been established through Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the same peace what we can call over here in the English, in the Greek, it is irony. But if you can come back in Psalms chapter 76, you can realize the great quality and the characters of Lord God the Father when he's able to mention that each and every human being should able to realize the content of the Bible wherewith he can know and understand that what exactly is man in the sight of God and his old sin nature, the activities of his old sin nature, which he is not able to overcome. Therefore, God the Father would give you all an option to understand. That what exactly are the simple demands of the word of Lord God? If every human being, if he can understand, he has five fingers and five, uh, five fingers to the hands and five fingers to the legs. Look, looking upon the brazen altar which has been prepared in the Old Testament, five feet by five feet, including five feet of cubit height, and there they're going to burn up. He shows that five by five represents the five fingers of human being. And these five fingers represents minimum five plus five called to be the Ten Commandments, five towards God and five towards his fellow man. When God the Father has given that in the Old Testament before he could prove himself that he is a consuming fire, 
He says the minimum requirements what Lord God the Father has demanded for a, from a man to be achieved, but this man is not able to fulfill those minimum requirements of the demands of the word of Lord God. He couldn't even keep those ten commandments. Now he comes to the New Testament. We are not under the law, but we are under the new law. The new law, wherewith he would say, be under the controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The new law, where we are called not to grieve the Holy Spirit of God, neither to squelch the Holy Spirit of God, but rather to walk breath by breath in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. In the New Testament, we are under new commands. In the Old Testament, if we can look, he says, whenever you point and face over five fingers of your hands, you either look that they have to be towards God or towards the man, which you have to fulfill. These are the minimum requirements what he demanded them in the Old Testament. But man is so much rebellion in nature that he couldn't fulfill even this minimum demands of the word of Lord God, which has been given for us in this church age, the minimum demands which he has to fulfill. So, dear brethren, he has been said in this great chapter, if we can look in Hebrews chapter 12, in verse 29, that Lord God is a consuming fire. So this click saying that a people say that God is love, who shows leniency regarding the shortcomings of the so-called good people, if they indeed exist, is commonly used in an absolute sense. However, it is incorrect. So if you can look, it is true that God has revealed himself as a God of love in Jesus Christ, his son. So he loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth upon him should not perish, but have an everlasting life. And that does not make him a God of love who turns a blind eye to wrong. And now he says, only he who has the Son has life, and who who does not have the Son of God has not life. So we must face the fact now, because he who has the Son has life, and he who does not have the Son has no life. The same thing what we read in Romans 5, 1, peace with God through Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So if you don't have Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in you, then there is no peace. That's the very simple logic. Now, if you can look upon the standards of Exodus chapter 19 and verse 19 and 20, he said, God once gave the people of Israel the law with the Ten Commandments. They were the minimum demands that the people had to meet to satisfy him. But man proved incapable of fulfilling his expectations. God, therefore, sent his son out of love. But that did not happen at the expense of his holiness. In his holy claims, God is still the same as he was at Sinai, where he appeared as a consuming fire. Therefore, his son paid the price and has established for us to be peace with God. So now the only solution for a man to accept that peace of God is to believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, because Lord God is a consuming fire. And people today, they're not able to realize. They're just making fun. And when Lord God the Father is able to establish peace with you, he knows very well that peace is nothing but a tabernacle of God. Whenever you look upon your five plus five fingers, just realize you have ten commandments in the Old Testament to be fulfilled. Five towards God and five towards your fellow man. Even this minimum demands which he has put forth for us in the Old Testament, you could not fulfill. Far less you can walk in the Spirit, far less you can breathe in the Spirit, far less you would not go to grieve or squelch or wax or lie and resist to Lord God, the Holy Spirit. We have something great over here in this church age. Because constantly he demands that we have to be under the controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So how then God, whose holiness demands justice, forgives sins? The answer to this question is a great subject of the Bible. Christ, the Son of God, became the substitute. Therefore, the substitute of spiritual death of Christ on the cross is the only solution for mankind to be saved. Therefore, he says, Christ, the Son of God, became the substitute. God's holy wrath fell upon him in all the severity on the cross of Calvary. No one can understand that the three hours of his judgment, which has been taken place on the cross. If anyone would look upon the judgment, they would really fear and they would believe upon God. Because that's a simple example what they could be right now over here on the earth when he says, when he's judging his son. Then how much more severe it would be in the hell when the people don't believe to follow and to obey his commandments by looking upon the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Though he said long back, like him ye shall rise a prophet, being prophesied even in the book of Acts by 
Peter, by even Paul, when he says to them, like him, he is going to rise up a prophet, believing upon him, you shall be saved. Like whom? Like Moses. So right from the Old Testament, Lord God the Father is able to give them the standards about to believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But today, people are not at all happy to believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And they're not even able to realize the true person who is the Savior for mankind, who is a mediator between God and man. So, dear brethren, he would say, God's holy wrath fell upon him in all the severity on the cross of Calvary. Now, God can affirm on forgiveness on a righteous basis. Therefore, everyone puts, who, who puts his faith in Christ and his atoning sacrifice receives Christ. And then when they receive Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the only purpose of this life is to meditate upon his word. That's the only very simple purpose. Because, dear brethren, if you can look upon this great verse of Psalm 119, you'll realize in verse number 104, he says, Through thy precepts I get understanding. You know, after believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, what is your life? You need to get some understanding. You need to make some sense. You need to make some. You need to make some stability. Because you're already hopeless. Because you're already miserable. You need to make some sense. You need to make some stability of your life. So he says, "How I'm going to get the stability or sense of my life?" He said, "Only through your precepts." The Hebrew word over here for precepts is called as pikot. And the meaning of the word pikud is nothing but the statutes which he has established. So in this pikud, which is nothing but like the overseer, the person who has been kept over there as an in charge to look. And this person where they have been kept for in charge or for the purpose of making the work or producing the work because his duty is to watch over, his duty is to direct, his duty is to command, his duty is to chastise you, his duty is to revive you, his duty is to count. Because your every breath has to be counted in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Your conscience knows very well either you're in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, or you're out of the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So, dear brethren, he would say the word pikud. So, whenever you open up your mouth from the rising of the sun till the going down of the sun, he demands that every thought has to be brought into captivity for Christ. That's pikud. Because man doesn't know what is understanding. Man cannot realize what is the fifth fold of the spirit. Because his demands are something vast, his demands are something unique, his demands are something great which no man can try to understand if he has not been driven by the word of Lord God. So the very first thing, believe in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ has established peace with you because he has made you to be peace with God. And now what does he do now? You have to look back his precepts. Pikud. Your every mouth, your every word that comes out of your mouth, from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, what it has to be to get every thought into captivity for Christ. So he says, my every action, my every thought, my every way of life, O oh Lord, I am not able to realize what is my understanding until unless I come to come back and cross-check through your word. And then he will realize why after believing in Christ, it is so much necessary and essential for us to take up your cross every day and follow my Lord. Why it is very much essential for us to walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Because without having to meditate upon the word of Lord God, we do not have understanding. You know, as if you can realize between a wife and husband, there should be some understanding. There should be some mutual understanding between both of them. A man should have a great respect towards the woman having to respect her volition. Because she has a free will in her soul. Man getting married to a woman, it doesn't mean to say that she's a slave machine for slot machine for sex machine. He has to realize she has a volition. And they should have that understanding wherewith she can be oriented with the tone of her husband. Wherewith he can tell she has been surrounded with me like a lily. Wherever he goes, he has the fragments of her. And they should have that understanding wherewith all things to the work of God first. But if we don't have that understanding... 
The greatest gift what God can give to a man to be a right woman, he cannot receive it with that honor. As he is not able to receive with honor the right salvation through Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as he is not able to realize the right life with the learning of the word of Lord God, so he shall not have respect towards his right woman as well. It will be only involvement with the flesh. And it cannot produce anything good further than that. It will be absolute vanity. Because the thinking, if you can look upon the word of Lord God, it says there should be some understanding. Any area of life, it demands understanding. Between father and son, siblings, relationships. Between wife and husband. It demands understanding. Because the greater you come to the close of closeness of Lord God the Father, the greater it shows as a Christian you become kind. And people will think God is love, so we shall have revenge with them. No, God is also a consuming fire. He cannot compromise his righteousness. He cannot compromise his justice. So who has paid it on the cross? It is Christ, our Lord of our God, the only one eligible to pay for you and for me. Therefore, the word called for him as Mone Gine, the only eligible one. Besides him, there could be no one to be a mediator between God and man, in that he is God and that he is human, so that he is able to stand between both. Therefore, he is a consuming fire. He cannot go against his son. And why he wants your body to be peace of God? Because he calls now your body to be the temple of the living Lord of a God in this church age. That's what you need to look. Because in Psalms chapter 76, in verse number 2, he describes what is Lord God. Because in verse number 1, he would say, saying that, in Judah, God is known. The word Judah meant to say praise. And the meaning of the word praise is nothing but using up your hand to get every thought into captivity for Christ. That's the word called to be Yada, which is to give thanks. And how are you going to give thanks? You are making up your hand to get every thought into captivity for Christ. That's what you are going to give the praise. So he said, in Judah, in praise, God has been made known. How and who is going to praise the Lord God? Depending upon your good works, as you said in Matthew. Depending upon the standards of your life that you're going to live, let the people praise God. They give thanks to God the Father. Because depending upon the things, what you're able to provide for the will of Lord God the Father, He says, they're going to give praise and they're going to give thanks unto Lord God the Father. So, dear brethren, in each and everything, looking upon your good deeds, they praise their Father in heaven. And today, dear brethren, people are not able to realize what is that praise they're going to give to Christ or to God the Father through our lives. So he said, in Judah, God is known. Elohim is made known. Yada, he's been acquainted. And that's the very great thing what you and I should learn to get your every point of thought, to get into captivity for Christ. Because he said in Judah, that is what in praise. The same thing if we can look upon this word praise in Hebrews chapter 13. He would teach for us the standards what you have to be giving with your lips for Christ. So he says in Hebrews chapter 13 in verse number 15, By him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. You know, these things are very, very essential for us. Because first of all, when Lord God the Father has made man, he has made man with an intention. And he has called him to obey the Ten Commandments. The minimum requirements, but man failed. Now he comes up with his consuming fire because no one can go to satisfy his righteousness and justice. What all, what all we have as our righteousness is relative, but with him is absolute. So in that absolute righteousness of Lord God the Father, he would say, believe upon Christ. Then what? You should have an understanding. How you get that understanding? Through his precepts. Because when you're going to believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, your body is now given to be the peace of God to be executed in it. So what is that peace of God you need to execute in that? Peace with God which you need to realize. 
He says over here in Psalm 76 2, the very first thing in Judah, God is known, or God is been made known only through the praise of your life. And therefore, Hebrews 13 15 emphasizes what is that? This is the fruit of our lips. And that to give praise, Lord God the Father, continually. And what is that praise? You're going to make the world to realize as a scribe the grammatical thoughts of Bible doctrine. The true praise to God the Father would come when they would realize what is this life designed by Lord God the Father through us. If not, they cannot give you true praise. The true praise comes only when you have the knowledge of Bible doctrine, Tehillah, the word describing over here the attributes of God. Every time Lord God the Father wants, He wants to give you that praise. That's the word Judah. And I will look. His name is great in Israel. You know what is the word name? The word name is called to be Shammah. That is, in each and every person's blood and thought process, he has to be greatly magnified. The word great is called to be Gadol. That meant to say what you have erected a structure to get every thought into captivity for Christ by becoming as disciples. And in return, as you grow up into Grammatias, you are going to go and make disciples of all the nations. That's what you have been called. Your name is great. Where, he says, the place, the location, Israel. What is the meaning of Israel? No matter whatever may be the pressure in your life, you still have the great energy, like Aleph energy, the bull energy, the leader kind of an energy. What for you to become disciples for Christ? This is the very simple logic. In Judah, in praise, God is made known. God is known acquainted. In Israel, his name is great. Only when, when the people are associated, no matter what may be the pressure upon your life, you still have the great vigor, valor, and energy in your body to become disciples. That's the word Israel. You're going to have a great and accurate relationship with Lord God the Father so that you can prevail over men. That's the word Israel. And in Israel, what it happens, he says his name is great. How his name could be great in Israel? Only when you are able to become learned disciples unto my Christ. So, in, in Israel, his name, that meant to say what his character. You know, the very first thing after believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, there are two sections. He says, either you'll be a learner or you will grow up to become a mature man. The same thing what he writes over there in First John as well in chapter number 2. If you can open up your Bible in verse 11, it has to be in First John chapter 2, in verse number 10 and following, he would say that in verse 11, uh, in 12, sorry. I write unto you, little children. The word little children are called tech non believers. This is what the people like who are still in Israel. So he says, little believers or little disciples, because your sins are forgiven and you are for his name's sakes. And now he says, I write unto you, fathers. These are what the people who are grown up, pater. These are the ones who are capable of producing more children. So he says, pater. So he says, emphasizing, I write unto you fathers, because you have known, the word known is called to be Guinnessco, that meant to say you have learned, you have come to perceive, you have come to acknowledge, you have come to know. It is as good as to say like the Jewish idiom for sexual intercourse between a man and a woman. That could be a very clear acquaintation for you rather than giving thousand words of explanation. A Jewish idiom to be a sexual intercourse between a right man and a right woman or to say between a, a couple, wife and husband. So this is what Ginesco is all about. He said to the, to the father, saying that, I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him that who is from the beginning. You know, these are the two categories. If Judah could be compared to the father's list, then Israel is compared to the children's list. So in between, from children to fatherhood, you have one more stage. And that stage is called to be young people. That's what we look over here. I write unto you, young man, because you have overcome the wicked one. The word overcome is called to be nikao. And the word nikao is nothing but your brethren as, first of all, you go to clean. The Hebrew word is zaka. Nikao, to win your victory, you clean all the hurdles that is between you and God. You're in a strategy of a war. You know very well how you're going to clean up. The same thing over here we have been told, you have been to spiritual warfare. The very first thing what you need to do, you need to clean up. And how are we going to clean them up? 
only when you are able to remove out the things that which have been hurdles between you and God. Therefore, we have been said, let go the past. Man should know what is his bag. That's what we read yesterday. The great content in the Bible, people may think it is about adultery, it is about idolatry, it is about fornication, it is about incest, it is about murders. That's what man is all about. And that's how God the Father would reveal to this mankind what a standard of a life it is for him. Because mankind is not able to realize what is Lord God the Father's character. So the content in the Bible, if you can look, people may be thinking that Bible is all about murder, adultery, rape, alcoholism, or any mannerism of lies or betrayal. But here, God, who always speaks the truth, wants us to recognize ourselves in the unflattering portrait of several persons whose behavior he condemns, and now he involves even those servants who have did it, and now he wants man to look upon that what an extent of evil nature in his heart is all about. So that's the great content of the Bible for us. So now he says, looking upon such content of your life, he wants man to realize and understand what is this true life. The life of which you have to clean it out from the viewpoint of man. Therefore, Colossians chapter 3 in verse 1 and following, he would say, if you have been risen with Christ, seek those things that are above. And he says in verse 2, set your affection on things above. The word affection is called to be for neo. And the word over there we can find in the Hebrew, it is for kokma, followed by the word sakel. Kokma meant to say you build up with the wisdom of Bible doctrine like a, like a, like a, like a man who has been grown up into grammatias. The word sakel meant to say, no matter what may be the pressure, the true purpose of your life is to grow up into grammatias because you have been called to be joining as disciples. That's what he said. Set your affection, set your life, set your understanding, set your knowledge. If you are not able to take up your cross every day and follow my Christ, you are no way worthy to be called for him as disciple in the Lord. So that's what he intends. Set your affection. Why? Because he knows very well. Clean up. If you're not able to go through the process of Zaka, then there is no victory over your enemy. You need to clean up. You need to clean up the enemy. Go for any war, any strategy of the war. You can understand. Clean up your enemy. The same thing over here in our life as well. We have this angelic conflict, which has been all the time a battle which goes on Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. And that battle emphasizes the unseen forces. What we need to do, we need to clean up the enemy. How the enemy could be cleaned up? Only when you're in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. If you're not in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, then your enemy cannot be cleansed. This is the meaning what it says, Engman, the word Engman, Neoniskas, the one who has been able to be saying as youth, and why it is so much essential for us in your youth, because this is the age where Lamentations 327 emphasizes, put your complete vigor and valor in the viewpoint of the renovated head of Bible doctrine, so that you can carry your cross every day and come back and learn the Lord's mind, that will lead you all to become as a choice young man who has been examined, who has been gone through the process of great examination, and now we are going to determine the choicest. You know, this is why you have been called to be young man, neoniscus, your body, your wall of fortification, your thought process which has been taken up. That's what you're going to look as a man of Gabor because you want to become first Bakor and then you'll become a man of Gabor. So in this stage, what you're going to do, your complete vigor and valor in the viewpoint of renovated head because you don't want to die like a beast. A beast has only body in his strength, but a man who has been called to be Adama is going to get every thought into captivity for Christ as a beast was a first Adam and later on we look upon the scriptures to say he became a last Adam as Zopo on the Numa quickening the spirit. So you need to look upon these things. As a young man, that is what while you are in youth, carry the yoke of the burden of the Lord God. People may say we are carrying, but they're not able to pass the test of choice of examination, Bakor. They're not able to pass the test of examination. In this great passing of the test of examination, dear brethren, the word of Lord God the Father would require to understand that you are able to make your wall of fortification in your body to be renovated like Bible doctrine. That's what your bakor is all about. 
you have been called to make the determination of the greatest choice. And you need to pass. Every believer has to pass this test. Then you have been called to pass the stage from milk to the stage of a great adult. So in between you have the stage of eating some bread. That's Bakor stage. That's what your examination stage. But people do not know they are born again in Christ. People do not know they have to be mature in Christ. They are simply following my Christ because of a nominal, conventional way of life. They do not even realize what is this life in the Lord. They are simply able to walk a life which is absolute vanity and lies. And they think it's really good and great and superb. You have three stages of your life to grow up. Israel's stage is the milk stage. Judah's stage is the father's stage. In between Israel and Judah, you have a stage called to be the youth stage. The youth stage where you have to overcome Nikao. The first one will be Narim, where you're going to get upon the standards of having your every point of thought. In the standards of Bible doctrine of vigor and valor. And that to be proved, just not you recruit all the men in your military. You got to give them proper training and afterwards they get back to the tests. That's what is called to be Bakor. And over in the Bakor state, your body is being taken up to the wall of fortification. <laughs> and in that wall of fortification, what is the renovated thought process of your life? That's what I've been called, Bakor. And when you pass this test, now you are going to become a father. That means you are going to be the Judah kind of orientation of life. As Psalm 76 1 says, In Judah, God is known. You know, we people are still stupid to say that we are believing in Christ, we are praising God with our lips. No. There is a systematic process in that. The word records first Bible in the milk. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, milk-oriented Christians. Let go every mannerism of hypocrisy, lies. From there you grow up to become to eat some bread. Matthew 4, 4, that's the stage of your youth. Neoniska stage, what has been mentioned in 1 John chapter 5, in verse number 12 and 13. And from there on, Hebrews 5, 14, strong meat. Like father's stage. That is the stage of Judah oriented over there in Psalm 76 1. God is known because you praise at every breath to Lord God the Father. Every breath you are considering the will of Lord God the Father. Every breath you are able to realize peace with God. Now we are going to manifest the marvelous glory of God through His precepts. You get understanding. And at every breath, what are you going to represent? You are going to represent that you are capable of fulfilling not only the Ten Commandments given in the Bible, but you are capable of fulfilling all the commands in the Bible because you are now being indwelled by Lord God the Holy Spirit. Breath by breath you walk, it is nothing but the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Every time you breathe or you do, it's purely nothing but Lord God, the Holy Spirit ministry. So you're going to say, just not we are going to be youth now, we are going to be something to the stage of fathers. And that's what Bible demands in us, the stage of fatherhood. And yet many people are not able to realize what is that stage of fatherhood. Because they cannot pass the stage of youth. Youth requires two categories. The first one, Nar. And the second one, Bakor. He who overcomes in the youth stage, Nikao, he has to go through this both process. He has to overcome through the process what we can call over here, Nar. And then the stage called Bakor. Because this youth, the young man, what does he do? He goes on to the process of becoming Nar plus Bakor. And then what does he do? He says, because, because, since the word you were Nar and the word you were Bakor, now you are able to say you have overcome the word Nikao. What happens over here, dear brethren? Nikao is nothing but the word called to be Zaka. Zaka is a great maturity thought. Where with now, if there is an option between uh, the case of Adam, whether you choose God or the woman of you whom with you had the quintessence of life, the word would be for Zaka meant to say, I would choose God rather than this woman. 
that's the word overcome because over here when we find the word for overcome zaka it is purely mentioning the standards what we can say that we are able to overcome any lust of our desires because the wall of fortification which has been put up in the war of flood card no matter however the blood may say we will sin or however you may say we are going to enjoy little season of this life in the richness as hebrews chapter 11 emphasizes for the case of moses he said rather to enjoy the sicknesses or the richnesses of this world he would say better for me to suffer with christ and to have a reproach for christ you know this is what he would say the same thing over here the word overcome nikao meant to say first zaka you clean out you dig and take every day you grow up into grammatias and as you grow up into grammatias you're going to become practical oriented christians the main problem in our christianity dear brethren people are not associated for the practical way of life because the greater they're far away from applying their life to meditation of the word of lord god the greater they're far away from practical way of life in psalm 119 he says in verse 97 how i love your law it is my meditation all the day just look upon this words in psalm 167 he would say again my soul keeps your testimony and i love them exceedingly and then he would say over here in psalms 25 in verse number 14 the secret of the lord is the, is with them those who fear him so now you should look whoever looks at the stained glass stained glass windows of a cathedral from outside will see nothing but gray dusty pieces of glass our impression changes completely inside the building we contemplate the window with wonder when it has been folded flooded with light we recognize the colors and the details and can properly appreciate the beauty of the artwork the same thing he applies now as an example for the bible it is no different with the bible one must enter into it to understand and apprise all the details entering into the bible means reading it attentively with perseverance and much thought for our personal needs god shows us considerable help and reliable hope in his book so we also get to know the true author of the bible who is called god himself so he says we can put our trust in this god through faith in him and his son we can make the blessings promised in god's word our own and we learn to thank him the bible becomes our treasure and we read it with interest and real joy people are not able to realize how it is to be meditating upon the word of lord god every day because that's the only treasure meditating upon the word is meditating upon god the people are not able to realize the essence and the characters and the attributes of the lord god which has given for us graciously for the sinful mankind through his word in each and every instance of the old testament you can understand the way how man is absolutely evil to his core so what does he want now in the church age he's showing a replica what a man has to be because he, he failed to fulfill the ten commandments in the past which was the least thing which demanded from man now he says in each and everything walk in the spirit be filled with the spirit and fulfill what are the demands of the lord of our god and in order to do so first you have to grow up from milk to bread from bread to strong meat this is what your real life of the thing which has been demanded so in that he says in first john chapter 5 in verse number 13 the youth neoniscas who are the people narims followed by the word bakor so what they do now they go to make their body to be a wall of fortification according to the renovated standards of bible doctrine these are the people who are going to overcome how they're going to overcome he explains two things the very first thing called to be zaka this is what we have been lacking in our pulpits and that zaka if you have been able to overcome he would say easily you can overcome the second word called to be kamath kamath is nothing but your desires your lusts because you need to establish with lord god the father purity and that purity or to overcome the lusts or the desires is possible only when you are able to meditate upon the word of lord god every day how how i love the law o lord it has been my meditation all day long psalm 119 verse 97 when you meditate upon the word of lord god you're going to have greater wisdom than your enemies through your precepts o lord you make us to be wiser than our enemies wiser than the ancient teachers are going to teach 
Therefore, he would say over there in verse 104 of Psalm 119, Through your precepts, O Lord, I get understanding. Therefore, your word is a lamb unto my feet. Without your word, O Lord, what could I do? Or what can I make in this life to be associated with? Because you have called me to be in the region of Judah, called to be the praised ones, called to be the father, mature ones. You have called me to be in that place. You have called me to be something great in that thinking. Not to be the same old man, like the child which have been put up. If we can look upon the present Christendom, they may say they're they are old and they're grown up and they calculate the age. But if we can realize they're still babies in Christ, they haven't passed across the test of First Peter chapter two, verse one and two. And you cannot get along with that. You may say, keeping them in me, I can do something great to the Lord God. No. Zaka is not able to work. You are not able to overcome the wicked one. You have not won victory over you. And in order to just read the translations, is not able to help you. You have to go back to the original Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic, and you have so many things over there. But the work of the pastor teacher, whose bona fide duty is to daily teach the word of Lord God, word by word, line by line, precept upon precept, iota upon iota, carer upon carer. That's what you have been demanded to preach and to teach every day. The pastors are not happy because the congregation is not happy. The congregation is not interested to know the word of Lord God. The pastors are also not happy. Therefore, we can find those passages in Zechariah when he says, I will cut off the shepherds because their soul has loathed me. This thing has to be really a great warning for many people over here. Because in the book of Zechariah, when he said, the shepherds who have been there, they have been loathed my soul. Because what for they have loathed the soul of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Because they have been able not to obey the demands of the Lord's will. So dear brethren, he would say, the shepherds who have been made into the standards of this stupid way of thinking on this life, the same thing what they're able to perform in this church age. So dear brethren, he would say in Zechariah chapter 10, my anger was kindled against the shepherds and I punished the gods for the Lord of hosts had visited his flock, the house of Judah, and had made them as his go godly, goodly hearts in the battle. But now we can find saying that these people, they were not able to be qualified for that work which God the Father has kept them. The same thing he said in verse in chapter 11, in verse number 8, he says, Three shepherds also I will cut off in one month. My soul loathed them, and their soul also abhorred me. You know, Zechariah chapter 11, when he emphasizes these things, he meant to say the right bona fide work of the pastor teacher, which they have to go and train up the congregation according to the demands of the word of Lord God, they didn't do it. So he said, my soul is loathed over them. That is, from the rising of the sun till to the going of the sun, the way how they're able to preach and teach, it is able to put extreme pressure upon the renovated thinking of Bible doctrine. How it is possible? Without exegesis, it is possible. Without isagogies, it is possible. Without categories in the exposition of the word of Lord God, it is possible. Because in the original language of the scriptures, what we have is absolutely different from what these people they're trying to preach for you in the oratory styles of your life and what they're trying to mold you up they're trying to mold you up to be something good or finding to be beautiful for the appreciation of fellow men but they're not able to find to say that you have been made to be a witness to these people you are made to be a leader to these people and you are made to be a commander to these people so these things they don't come to realize because first of all they are putting pressure upon the thinking of Christ how we can think they're putting pressure upon the thinking of Christ, they reject exegesis. The same thing what in Luke chapter 6 in verse number 3, our Lord of our God said, have you not read what David did? You know, people are not mindful about the things what the word of Lord God says. The word read went to say anagenisco, which is called again to analyze and exegete the passages. The same thing in John 1.18. What did Christ the Lord of our God tell them? He makes them to realize you have to go to the process of exegeomai study in the word of Lord God. And many people will try to strive into the narrow gate, but they cannot because the narrow gate is too hard and too difficult for these people to walk. So he has been said many people don't become the preachers of the word of Lord God. God. James 3.1. First of all, you are loathing the soul of the Lord God. 
You are putting pressure upon the content of the Lord's mind, that which has to be taught in the viewpoint of standards of exegesis and isagogues and categories in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, that is not being done in your life. Therefore, he says, I will cut off the shepherds. These are no way shepherds to me. Because of them, my soul is loathed. From the rising of the sun till the going down of the sun, they are putting extreme pressure. Where? Upon the thinking of the word of Lord God. Rather than meditating God, rather than meditating upon the Lord's mind, that's what the word of Lord God is all about. They are putting pressure. How they are putting pressure? They are not coming for exegesis. They are not coming for isagogies. They are not coming for categorical exposition of the word of Lord God in the proper dispensing technique of dispensations, wherewith they can learn the word in proper iota and carrier of doctrinal levels of teaching. They have lost it. And it's a great problem for us in our midst today. They have completely lost it. The proper methods of teachings. And yet they think they are pleasing the Lord. <laughs> Dear brethren, check into your own soul. Because you are accountable for your own soul. Because the unction has been given for all. 1 John 2, 20 and 27. Therefore you are inexcusable to claim your excuses before the presence of Lord God the Father. If you really have the fear of Lord God the Father, you really worry about your soul. But today there are children who don't worry about their parents. Far as they think they can worry about their own soul. The way have they been able to spend their time in vanity. How would they think they are really going to spend their time to worry about their own soul for eternity. Therefore, many of the houses which you can look, old age, old age homes, because it shows the simple responsibility what God the Father has given for a man. Being not faithful in little things, how can he be faithful in great things of the work of Lord God? You are accountable for everything. And people are so much negligent about many things in this life. They're not at all able to realize what they're losing in the presence of Lord God the Father every breath. You're accountable for many things. Tomorrow God the Father would say, you haven't been faithful in small things. How can I give you great things? As a pastor teacher, I've been called to give you an account in the exegetical word. From Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20, 21, you have to give an account because every believer has been called to be a witness. Every believer has been made to be a commander. Every believer has been led to be a leader. And since you're not able to make them to be a witness, then how they can be leader? How they can be as commander? So that they can make up to realize their souls are not been lost in the sight of the Lord. So he says in Zechariah 11, I will cut off because their souls are able to put pressure. The Hebrew word loth over here, it has been called as katser. The strong code number assigned for it is 7114. And that is what he says, from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, constantly they come to preach the word of Lord God without digging or looking into the standards of Hebrew, Greek or Aramaic, whether you believe it, accept it or whether you take it or not, we seldom care about that because the word katser is nothing but you have been able to put pressure upon the thinking of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. How are you going to put that pressure? Just to illustrate this, for example, if you're having a small function, we are going to say to honor the man who has done this work. For example, what I'm telling to you. And all the things what that man has done, you just don't go to give that an account to the congregation or to the people who have been there, but you would simply give him a less value of those things, what he has done. And if you can think that he's been honored, the man will be really absolutely hurt. He would say, I have done so many things, but she mentioned only two or three. He would say that I have been able to perform so many things for these people. They couldn't even have time to mention about my all the things. And that man will be so badly hurt. You know, because that's what it happens. That's the tendency of man. Now, just trying to give you the 
analogy in the in the standards of anthropomorphisms because if man is not able to understand these terms in the standards of man then he can never understand the terms what is trinity god the father god the son and lord god the holy spirit in the form of anthropopathism they can never understand that the same thing over here we are applying to god the characters of man now we are giving you the standards of man for you because you are frustrating you are loathing you are cutsare why what lord god the father has done he says in hosea chapter 8 in verse number 12 ten thousands of the things myriads of the things have been there myriads of myriads but what man is considering them he would say considering the word of lord god as a strange thing for them they considering the word of lord god as a very very strange thing you know that's the very simple logic over here for us to apply you're considering the word of lord god as a very very strange thing the same thing a man who's not been properly honored he would say i have done hundreds of good things they don't even mention one or two if ever they love to mention they mention only one not even two you look the infallible and inner word of lord god which god the father through his divine love he has bestowed upon us to give this bible what we're having in our hands Though we meditate all day long, even that short, that's not enough. Even if you meditate upon the word of Lord God all day long, that's not enough. That's not at all enough. Even though you meditate upon the word of Lord God, because there are so many things in the Bible which you need to know, and why the soul of Lord God the Father has been lost to the cat's ear, because you are not even mentioning one thing from the Hebrew, one thing from the Greek, one thing from the standards of the Lord's mind in the original languages of the Scriptures. If you have really the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher, what he would do as a pastor teacher, you would go back to dig and take and learn the word of Lord God in the original Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. That's the meaning of the word of John one eight in Acts Jeremiah. That's the real essence. The pastor teachers are qualified with such great qualifications. They would say, "We are M D U. We have done with B T H. We are this. We are that." Throw those idiots into the sheer rats with those crap piece of papers, which they get qualified from the theological colleges. If the Ivory schools, which have been established from these three great universities, Harvard, Dartmouth, and this Oxford universities or Cambridge universities, they have come up with only one intention to make up the word of lord god to be taught in the virginal hebrew greek and aramaic in the hebrew of the pictographical representations of the word of lord god if you can find in those 22 alphabets you have lot many things to interpret that which could align to the essence of lord god the father and that's the great signal or a great sign that you have the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher not just looking into the translations and coming back and preaching your oratory styles to make people to come out of the milk stage what is the milk stage if you can look upon in first peter chapter 2 you can realize in verse number 1 and 2 this is the milk stage he says therefore lay aside all malice all guile all hypocrisy all envies and all evil speakings this is the milk stage the same thing over here again if you can find in hebrews chapter 5 when he would say or in chapter 6 in verse number 1 he would say therefore living the principles of the doctrine of christ let us go on unto perfection he says let us move on to telelios not laying again the foundation of repentance this is the milk stage from dead works and of faith towards god of doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of the hands and of the resurrection of the dead and of the eternal judgment he says live this this is a milk stage god the father doesn't intend you to be in the milk stage still In First Peter chapter two, he would say, "Your life has been associated with that anger, with your mental attitude, sins, with wrath, with whatsoever it is, jealousy, vindictiveness." He says, "This is a milk stage, and what the preachers are preaching for you today, milk stage. They don't make up your body to be the peace or the tabernacle or the shaken glory of Lord God the Father. Though you have been established peace with God, you have to be the temple of the living Lord of a God, and you have to grow up from the stage of Israel, where God's name is greatly known, from." there you have to be make known to the sages of for judah where the word of lord god has been praised in your midst being acquainted with the truth 
So you have to look whether your mentality of thinking or teaching is being really loathsome to God. There are ten thousands of the myriads of the things which have been recorded and kept for us in the Bible, but you're not able to mention even one or two. Then will you not think the soul of my Lord God will be frustrated? Therefore, he says, I will cut off the shepherds. And today, people are so stupid and ignorant and arrogant that they do not even realize what is the true life. All the days of this life, they're just able to think when they come to the stage of some majority of a minor age, from minor to major age, they pass to the teenage. And they say, after the age of 18, we have all the license for our independent life. And they would say, what the best we can do? Oh, let's try a government job. Uh, let's, let, let's, let's try to become an engineer or a doctor. And what they do by the age of 20 or 20, uh, 25, they want want to get up settled in their life and what they do now they got into well settled job and they think we have been occupied in the government section of job for 60 years but they do not realize it's a slavery for them because they've been saying that we are happy and comfortable with a secure job no they're simply able to spend the time in vanity and what is the life they're going to spend they're going to spend the time in making a business in making up money and filling out that upon the upon this life of this flesh. And they said they have real achieved great. No, dear brethren. You're so fools not to know your eternal life. You're so fools not to realize the true word of Lord God from the original Hebrew, Greek, and Arabic. If ever you would ask the pastor teacher, you would say, I want to know the word of Lord God in the original Hebrew, Greek, and Arabic, not the standards of your stupidity of your thoughts. Because people will love to talk about cleansing out the milk stage. We don't want the milk stage. We want to have something solid. The congregation is not happy to ask them because they're occupied in the day-to-day -day life of business, day-to-day -day life of their government section of jobs, where they're having time because they're so much occupied in the business of this life that they have been absolutely not able to find the field where they could go and find the hidden treasure. And when they found the hidden treasure, they sell off all the things they have and they come to buy that field. And do you think you have one more life? One life to settle up yourselves and one life to make up your money in God. That's what people are thinking after the age of 60 when we get into retirement. Then we go to give this life to God. <laughs> and he would say it's very difficult for us without food to survive. Because if we don't work, if we don't have business, how would we go back to the luxuries of life? <laughs> Dear brethren... Naked you come, naked you go. Nothing you bought, nothing you take. Being content with whatever state you are, says the word of Lord God. If you're happy with the standards to put in the will of Lord God the Father, that is enough. Why do you want to look upon the luxuriant way of life? You know, that's where the third part of the field of the sower of the seed it falls. The cares, the anxieties, the worries... The name and fame of this life will choke them up. They simply choke them up. The anxieties, the worries, the cares. Whatsoever the purpose of your life, be content to know the word of God. Apart from that, whatsoever you think, that it has been enough for me to live a luxurious way of life. It's just nothing but stupidity. Therefore Christ, the Lord of God, would say, John 6, labor for the food which perisheth not. Rather than laboring for the food which perisheth. People are happy to labor for the food which perisheth. When, when you're going to labor for the food which perisheth not, your divine content, your standards of the Lord's mind, when are you going to get it? After you die. And that's what man is. Man is able to get that when he thinketh he has one more life to get. So God the Father knows even about your business, doesn't he know? God the Father knows even about your job, do you think, doesn't he know that? Therefore he has given for a man in simple words, pay your daily EMI of quota to me. What is the daily EMI? Here, two hours, 40 minutes, it's mine. Don't rob it from me. Any hour of the day you give it, you give it to me. Any time of the day you give it, give it to me. Therefore, eight, eight, eight sections into three quarters. 
eight hours to sleep, eight hours to work. The remaining eight hours we were into four, into two departments, four hours each. And that solid four hours you give for your friends, entertainment and anything and stupidity of life. The remaining four hours in that you give solid two hours, 40 minutes to the Lord. You will be left over with another one hour, 20 minutes to be given more. Just plan in these terms, you will realize what is your life. Every day, don't rob from the Lord God. In the book of Malachi, they talk about robbing. And he said, give back to me everything. I will show you the showers of the blessings. And that people are confined that only for what? Only for the money of the income towards the church. And they would say, give tithe, God will give you money. Give tithe, God will do this. They're thinking, Lord God is a jenny. So that you put some money to him and you rub him, he's going to give you something more. <laughs> he says, who has asked you to trade my courts? Get out of your sacrifices over here. What does Lord God the Father require and demand from you? He would say, wisdom of doctrine, wisdom of doctrine, 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 doctrine. That's what he demands from us. The knowledge of the word of Lord God, that's what he demands from us. But if people have been looking in the standards of a life, because you're not able to realize every content of the word of Lord God has to be in the original Hebrew, Greek, or Aramaic. If the pastor teachers are not preaching to you in those terms, you think you have gone forever. Though they may have MDiv, though they may have DD, though they may have XYZ, if they're not been expertized in the original Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic, just don't believe those words of those men that playing with your eternal life, they're playing misery with your eternity. If anyone doesn't know the language of the Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic to even at least learn them from in the interlinear scriptures and decode them and make up their life to study in the pictographical representation and teach, if they don't do that, don't believe them. These haven't been sent by the Lord God. These are liars. And on behalf of them, the souls of Lord God the Father is been absolutely grieved. Lord, the cat said. And when the souls of them is been catsare, is been grieved, you can realize how much they're frustrating the word of the Lord. The right honor which should belong to Lord God the Father is not been done. The right glory which belongs to Lord God the Father is not been executed. The right things which has to be for Lord God the Father is not been done. He has given for us ten thousands of the myriads of the myriads of the things he said in Hosea 8 12. But if people are considering that to be a strange thing, you haven't even digged the word of Lord God in the original Hebrew Greek head or back. How could you be clean? How could you be Zakai in the presence of Lord God the Father? How could you say you're going to overcome the desires of this flesh? How could you? What do you think with my Lord God the Father? You think he can just be like a loving God? As you said, God is love. He's a consuming fire. Be careful with him. You're not even able to fulfill the Ten Commandments of the Word of the Lord God. The Ten Commandments of the Word of Lord God, you're not able to fulfill it. How would you be there? Or what would you get over there? Even the simple Ten Commandments. What does he want? No God besides him. What does he want? To love your neighbor as you love thyself. That's the summary of the commandments which has been given for us. It covers all the things in that great word called as love. And the stargazers, the constellation weavers, the Jorastians, they want to look upon to something, look and they say, this is what Christ is, this is what this is. He said, love your neighbor as you love thyself. Are you loving him? Why? You may say, how we can love him? Have you shown them the path of grace? Have you shown them the path of peace? Have you shown them the path of light and truth? Through your holy manner walk of life? Have you shown that? And you people think you're able to not load the soul of the Lord God. His soul has been lothed by the so-called false pastor teachers to whom the word of Lord God has come. Therefore, he said long back in the book of Jeremiah itself, in the book of Ezekiel itself, he says unto them, Lord God hasn't sent them, yet they ran. 
If they have been sent by the Lord of God, they would preach to you solid Bible doctrine. The word of God gift given to them will make them to be faithfully prepared in the word of Lord God of the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic and teach to the congregation to make them to know what is their fate in Christ. There would be no excuse on those terms. No matter how brilliant you may think or how great you may think or how superb you may think. The terms wouldn't be in the standards of your life which you have been thinking over here on this earth. He would say, go back and learn the word of Lord God in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. If you have the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher, he wouldn't make you all to become a great orator. He wouldn't become, make you all to give the reasons in the standards of learning. X, Y, Z stories to be incorporated because your plan is not just like to be a kid to overcome the social morality or immorality of life. Are the things pertaining to the old sin nature, Christian, moral and immoral degeneracy of life. You're not just that. You're called to be something great than that called to be virtue in the Lord. And what a stupid idiots we are. People that think they have the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher, but they don't even come to preach the word of Lord God every week, at least once in the Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. Look upon in the past dispensation why it got destroyed, why people got, why, why people got destroyed. He says in Hosea chapter 4, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, how they could get the knowledge when there are no preachers, when there are no proper effective preachers. The same thing what is going to mention in the millennium and they would say for us, those days there will be not a mention to say, come, let's hear this, let's hear that. They would say all will be with the knowledge of God. They will realize the same thing what is said in First John chapter 2 in verse 20 and 26 to say each and every believer will have the unction of Lord God the Holy Spirit in this church age and that requires no man to teach because they will have a fear fear to overcome the wicked one fear to overcome the standards of lies therefore in the same Psalms of 119 you would say Lord through your precepts O Lord I get understanding and I hate every false way every evil way Every way that which is distorted, I hate it. And that's what people are not able to realize. Every false way, every way that which has been evil. He says, I hate them. When? When you get understanding, when you know the truth. But today, people are being able to love the handmade certificates by the so-called theological institutions. They're simply able to become the theological institutions to be their qualifications, but not the real qualification which Lord God the Father would give to every pastor teacher to go back and learn the word of Lord God in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. In order to cook up even a simple food, it requires time. If you're making up some juice, you know very well it takes time. Within an instant of a second, it cannot be cooked. It cannot be made up. It takes time. Then how much more God the Father would prepare his man? Minimum two decades. And people don't know what is the life that they go through that two decades. They want to become instant. They would say we have gone to that theological college for six months, for one year. Or we had maximum four years. Never in their lifetime they would kneel down and read the Bible. Never in their lifetime, if they have read the Bible, they wouldn't write the Bible. If you would write the Bible, you would know each and every word of that. You would say, Lord, now I finish writing the Bible in the original, in this English translation. Lord, give me the original interpretation of your word in the Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. And when I'm going through each and every iota and carrier of the Bible, that time you'll realize how much of our information which has to be taught and yet how much of our information we are suppressing to preach the truth. How much of the information has been suppressed? Because man doesn't have creativity to look. If he doesn't have creativity, he cannot think. And what does he say? He goes to the, to the such and such standards of theological colleges, which have been for Baptist, for Lutheranist, for Methodist, for Pentecost. They have their precepts, thoughts of mind, and they would say, we'll follow this, we will do this. 
but they don't come out to expound the word of Lord God in the standards of original exegesis. They don't even take a bold step to preach the truth. And what they're occupied with? <laughs> Rather than practicing, they only supply, but they don't apply. That's what they do. But the word of Lord God demands application. Because it is not just meditation that makes, he would say. We must read the Bible with a readiness to follow its teaching. They are absolutely making katsir to my Lord's soul. Lotsam. And he says over here, nevertheless, we must read the Bible with readiness to follow its teaching. Only then will it have a transforming effect upon our lives. And then we can progress step by step. The secret of understanding more of the word of God lies in the measure in which we practice what we have already grasped. This is the secret. The more you learn, the more you need to practice it. So he says over here, dear brethren, my soul lothed them and their soul has abhorred. The word abhorred, dear brethren, it is called as bakal from the standards of what we can call over here for lothed katser. He says that their soul has abhorred me. The reason why it has become katser to me, he says, because they have made bakal, bakal of an effect. The word of bakal over here to loth, because they are going to go to the church for the standards of gaining, gaining some gain through greed. So what does he say now? Because their body and their wall of fortification is very, very far away from discipleship program what I intended them to preach. And today this word abhor, Zechariah 11, 8, though it has been recorded for us in the Old Testament almost all two to 2,800 years back, you can still find the way how this word of Lord God speaks lively today for us because the pastor teacher's soul is abhorred to God. Why? Because their teachings or their mindset or their thinking is very, very far away from discipleship program. If the people who are listening, if they're able to make it up today or tomorrow, if they have been into the ministry of a pastor teachers, they have to examine their own consciousness and they should say, are we really making disciples? Are we really following the standards of Apostle Paul, as he said in Acts chapter 20, in a place of three years? Again, if we can find in the entire book of Acts, you will find in a place for two years, Tyrrhenius, in a place for hundred and in a, in a place for one and a half year, in a place for one year, in a place for half year, in a place for even three months. He taught them daily, daily, daily. The same incident what we can look in Acts chapter 14. When he gets back to his consciousness, he goes to make Hikana Oma Thirty years. The same thing he writes in Second Corinthians, where with he emphasizes the way how after uh, he recollects that after fourteen years he says whether I was in flesh or not I do not know. But the things which have been told or seen in the heaven I am not now entitled to give for you to reveal for you. But he does it in action. What he goes on to make disciples, disciples, disciples. How simple Christ our Lord of God teaches to us in the Great Commission, Matthew 28, 18 through 20. People are happy with the evangelism work of Mark Gospel, but they're not happy with Matthew 28. The great thing which the people got motivated was to go and make disciples. And people are not mindful about the time. The people may sing, Lord, help me to count my days. How many days are left over for me on this earth? And they would say, Lord, teach me how to count my days because I have two daughters. I need to get them married. One has come to the age of marriage. Other one is just graduating in the college. So, Lord, help me how many days I have. This is what people will love to pray to God. <laughs> But he says over there in Psalms, when he says that song, he says to them, help me to put my days unto wisdom. And what is wisdom? To do the will of Lord God the Father is wisdom. And what is the will of Lord God the Father? Matthew 28, 18 through 20. They have done the foundation. Once again, don't go to lay down the foundation. For example, in India, when uh, 
Thomas had come in the 56 AD. You can understand how much he has been struggled. Up until then, from there till to the 17th or 18th century, William Carey could come. We couldn't find Bible in our own hands. So now just don't put to go to back to the same foundation of 17 or 1800 years back of history. Get back now to make the word of Lord God in their own languages to be stabilized and to preach. I'm just giving an example of my country, India. In the first century, AD 56, Thomas comes to India. In 18th century, William Carey comes to India. So now what is the will of God the Father? The Great Commission, go and make disciples. How many disciples are there? What did Christ the Lord of God give for us to go and make disciples? That's the Great Commission given for us. What else do we have? Other things to practice on this earth. The Great Commission which is given for us to go and make disciples of all the nations. That's very, very simple. Go and make disciples of all the nations. That's the only great commission given for us. And what we're doing today, we are abhorring the soul of the Lord. Cats here at one hand because Bacal is operating on the other end. People are only supplying, but they're not applying the word of the Lord. But God the Father intention is first join as a disciple in Israel. Let his name be made known. Let his character be shined in you by getting every thought into captivity for Christ. And then what does he want? He wants you people to be grown up. Nikao. Your pure Zaka followed by the word Kamad. You want to dig and take every thought like a grammatias in the Bible doctrine. That's what he says in Matthew 13, 52. We do not know how many people are interested in these things because when he said teaching all the nations in Matthew 28, 19, the best reference would be Matthew 13, 52, which is called to go and make disciples of all the nations. That is what he said, joining as disciples and growing up into grammatias. This is the theme. But you can find over here the soul of the pastor teachers. Why it has been able to abhor the Lord God is Bacal. Because their body is not built up like a wall of fortification to go and make disciples. Though the word of Lord God recordedly teaches to us because of the great commission of Christ in Matthew 28. The great work of Apostle Paul in Acts chapter 14, Acts chapter 20. He goes them to give even in the mystery epistles of the doctrine of the church age. Of the church age corpus, he says in the book of Colossians chapter 1, verses 24 to 29, he says every believer, panto anthropas, with after warning, he wants panto anthropas to go on for teaching. He wants every believer or every human being or every man, he wants them to be perfect according to the standards of the thinking of Christ. Will you not think your souls are abhorring Lord God? You need to cross check your life. For sure the souls of you are abhorring the Lord God. You may say, no, Lord. You're not a witness to the truth. You're not a leader to the truth. You're not a commander of the truth. Every believer has been called to be a witness, a leader, and a commander. Then how much more the pastor teacher ought to be? The people should come there to learn from his lips the knowledge of Bible doctrine. The people should come back and look and realize the place which Lord God the Father has designed for us in Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 24 through 30. If we can look upon those passages, you will realize and understand the two things which have been needed, the holy things. First, your, your, your holiness and the things pertaining to fulfill His great promise or His great requirements, the woes which you need to pay. So He says the holy things and the woe which you need to pay, these things are needed for you. And in the place which God the Father has given, he says, you want to reside in those places? Then have a straight, upright relationship with Lord God the Father every day. Have a true and accurate relationship with Lord God the Father every day. And then you will wake up. Because you're going to fulfill the demands of the word of Lord God. Then you will realize, he says in Deuteronomy 12, 32. Nothing you shall add to the word of Lord God. Nothing you shall take away from the word of Lord God. Because that word of Lord God is being called to be the Lord's essence and character. So dear brethren, 
in order to move from milk to bread, from bread to strong meat. Milk is the place of Israel, Psalm 76, 1, in the later part of the verse called as B. Because great is thy name, O Lord, in Israel. And in Judah is a mature stage of father level of thinking, where God is being made known, praising through the standards of the Lord's word in your life, God is being made known. So in between this both, from milk to the man of a father, you are going to have one more stage called to be the youth, Neoniska stage. That's what your day by day process is all about. We are preaching for you in 1 John chapter 2. So you need to overcome your enemy. You need to win. And that demands your day by day carrying your cross. And that work should be done with proper Bakor standards. Your body, your soul should be associated with Bible doctrine, its renovated standards of thinking. And if this thinking is not being done properly by the so called pastor teachers, then he would say, Because of them my soul is abhorred. Because their soul has become loathed in my sight. The word for God the Father, soul being, ab being aboard, he would say, Katser. Why? Because the soul of this so called pastor teachers is aboard. That's called to be Bakal in the Hebrew. Heb Zechariah 11 8. Says, so I'll cut off, I will chop them off from my sight. Because these people cannot make you all to be a witness. These people cannot make them all to be as a leader. These people cannot make them all to be as a commander. So he knows very well, I will cut them off, I will chop them off. These are not worthy to me, I will chop them off. And how he is going to chop them off? When there is no proper word in their mouth. And today you can look how many pastors are really worried about the standards of Bible doctrine to be established. And what do they have now in their mouth? Miracles, healings, tongues, prosperity gospels. This is what they have in their mouth. Just look. If they have been sent by the Lord of a God, the only burden for them would be exegesis. What is chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord of a God, so shall be. They are not interested in the chaff, but they will be interested only in the wheat. They want to give a solid doctrine to learn. Because they don't have any other time for you all to realize or understand in stupid things. They want only one thing, solid doctrine, solid doctrine. That's what they would love to teach. And that's the bona fide real duty of the pastor teacher, if he has this bona fide work. Not just to be like a stupid man jumping like a monkey on the stages, running up and down in his life. No. Day by day, morning one hour, evening one hour, you have to preach the word of Lord God. Then the soul of Lord God the Father is not aboard on your back. Because people are simply happy to go on to make upon the things in this life in the standards of stupidity. Though they have been made peace with God, the glory of Lord God the Father is not residing in your body. How will the earth be filled with the glory of Lord God the Father? When that glory is not residing in your body first, you have to be that little light, little Christ shining in you. As light luminaries, you have to be the one who goes to show to the world what is it. You have to be the person. And yet, you people are not able to realize what is that in the Lord. And what is happening today, dear brethren? False pastor teachers are already occupied like traitors in our pulpits. Never even have a burden to make disciples. Never even they realize the great commission of my Lord, except upon their lips. And in my country, India, <laughs> these are like the way in the first century when Thomas had come, Apostle Thomas, from there till to the 17th or 18th century, they are lying in darkness. So the same thing is happening to the so-called present Christendom men in the church. 
who are absolutely in darkness, not to make use of the time and the gift given to them, to go and make disciples with proper inculcation of the Lord's word in the pulpits. Everyone is still running behind the scenes, called to be miracles, healings, or tongues. Everyone is running behind the things pertaining to their stupid way of life. Everyone. They are simply associated to run behind the miracles, healings, or tongues. They want to be the preserver of their body, not the preserver of their soul or overseer of their soul. They don't want to be the overseer of doctrine. Even in Mark 6, 7, when Satan besieges to say, Lord with authority, I claim that you shall not send us to those place where we have come from, but send us to the place of these pigs. They claim with begging in the standards of authority to the Lord because the time has not yet come. But today there are people who are not even able to claim to say to the pastor teacher, tell us nothing but the truth. We want nothing but the word of Lord God. What does it mean to say in the Bible? We don't want your interpretations. We don't want your silly stupid logics. We don't want your silly stupid works of the Spirit. We want the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. If it is begin with Acts chapter 2, with the tongues in Acts chapter 4, they claim for miracles and they claim for the tongues, for, for the works of preaching the word of God in Acts chapter 4. And there was a great cloud which has been shaken up with a thundering sound and they have been filled and the word of Lord God records over there. They preached the word of Lord God. So the unique ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to preach and to teach Lord's mind. And the people are not even begging like that Satan which begs. In Mark 6, someone emphasizing, let us not be put into the, into, the, into the dungeon again from where we came, but send us into these pigs. They are not even able to claim to say, Lord, teach us nothing but the truth. We want nothing but the truth. Like the king Amaziah is going to ask in the standards of that prophet for Micaiah. Not that Amaziah, but the man over there in First Kings chapter 22. Because Amaziah rejects the counsel of Lord God in First in Second Chronicles chapter 25. So he says, destruction and devastation has been designed upon him because he rejects the counsel of the Lord God. Because he's approaching other gods to guide him, to lead him as they went along to find God in the standards of that golden calf incident. They couldn't wait for 40 days for Moses to come and to be faithful in the word of Lord God, far less though the church has been given such sort of an ample time for you all to look and to realize in the completed can of scripture and to wait upon the Lord God in integrity and in truth, far less you can wait upon the Lord God. And yet, people are dying without even looking upon even half, even of the, half of the days of the life. A young woman by the age of 28 getting sudden heart attack and she dies. During this season of Dasara where they celebrate in India, when they love to play songs and they dance before their gods, recorded deaths almost all 78 people because of sudden collapse of heart attacks. Because man is not able to wait to know the truth because he's involving his mind to get into the standards of this life. And people would count to look back upon the thing given by Corona. And they say, the things pertaining to that great injection, which they think that they have been taken as an antidote for that virus, that is causing them heart attacks and they die. <laughs> as the people, they fail to wait upon the Lord God for their great solution in Christ. For 40 days they didn't wait and they wanted a calf. So man on this earth is looking for better solutions of stupidity in life rather than the real solutions of the word of the Lord. And that they think they can achieve great things in this life by disobeying the commandments and the demands of the word of Lord God. It's not possible, dear brethren. It is not your general assumptions or assertions that goes to make an effect. It's what the fundamental reality of the word of Lord God stands for. And yet, 
How many days more you want to reject the Lord's mind? At how many days more you don't want to grow up from milk to bread, from bread to strong meat? You think over them. But we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His matchless, marvelous, in Father divine, glorious grace. So with our head, broad and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In audible telling to Lord God the Father in the prayers of your soul that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour. That's the moment itself. You shall have the eternal truth. The eternal truth for so very simple. Believing Christ, we shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest part is to grow up in grace and knowledge of Bible doctrine. That with you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest matter is to carry so thon lagan. Herald the word in season and out of season because the Dharma to my witnesses with have been called. The number one Dharma to my witnesses in willing trinity for the Bible in our hands. And number two Dharma to my witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature, then tear and the closely your witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God, the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory, in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. Infinitely divine, Holy Father, being grateful and thankful for this revelation, O Lord, which you have given for us to understand through your word. Nothing but a pain remains in our heart, O Lord, that we are not able to give proper honor through your word. Let our Lord, day by day, Father, you are going to train us up according to your will, so that, Lord, we shall not waste our time in the vanity of this life, but rather, O oh Lord, help us to be prompt enough, faithful enough, in giving your work which you have given for us to completely and accurately finish it with proper completion as Christ, O oh Lord, our God, prayed in John 17, 4 through 6. Help us, O oh Lord, not to waste our time in vanities of this life. Cut short of each and everything, O oh Lord, which is against your will, and make us to concentrate only upon your thinking because there is a long gap of the 1st century till to the 18th century in my country, India, where your proper word hasn't been properly honored to make and go, to go and make disciples. And that, O oh Lord, the present Christendom is able to sleep in its vanity of thinking, looking and searching for lies rather than truth. Your soul is about, O oh Lord, because of our soul, which has been loathed in your sense. Help us, O oh Lord, to cleanse this loath process of us and make us to understand that you have given us this great privilege to handle your word and to fulfill thy goal, so that in each and everything, O Lord, you have to be glorified through our lives. Far less we could go on for procrastination and delay the things of your work which you want us to perform long back in your call, which you have called for us in the past. So, Father, being grateful and thankful for the things which you have given for us to study, we pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten the challenge and to bless us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, sorry, Lord.